Hello YouTubers, you're watching Crafts at Home with Lisa, I'm Lisa and today I'm going to show you um, my little wooden box if you can see how cool it is now, I was going to do the black glasses with you we will do them but what I wanted to do was give have a little bit of a break from um, dragons and this little box holds my cutters now these are five cutters um, called cutters spelt with a K and they live in here because they're my special ones they're metal these ones are teardrop ones and they're really good quality they're great um, they make a good cut and they look really good now if you watch the dragon glass this is what we used those cutters on the smallest one I think it was um, like I said it's got five sizes but I keep it in this box now what I want to do is get more shapes and then just have these boxes sort of stacked on the side um, with different patterns on it now I will do a flower to go on the top using the cutter so you can see that it's um, the teardrop shape that's in this box okay so let me take those out for a moment so I started off with the box, this is not the direction I wanted to go in, I don't really know what direction I was going in. For anybody who's watched any of my previous videos, I very rarely um, plan out what I'm going to do, I just sort of go with the flow. Um, so I've done all the box, I've done it all, so all I've got, I won't do the bottom, but I left this panel here so I could sort of do it with you. Now this was black. I started off with black clay, female clay. Uh, there's lots of different clays out there and everybody uses different ones, it's whatever they like. Uh, the female is quite a hard clay, can be, until you condition it through a pasta machine or just keep rolling it out and then it goes softer. Um, and then I added a load of what I call muddied clay, which are all the little bits that you don't want. You cut it off and it's all colours mixed and you chuck it into a little box. And I tend to use that as the centre part where most people use foil and sometimes I have used foil in the past but I, that's what I put in there to bulk it out and then cover it so I added some of that into it, I found some golds and browns and whatnot and this is the colours I came up with which I think you'll agree pretty smart okay so this is what I've got left now do bear in mind which has caught me out when you do it Obviously the more it goes through the pasta machine, the more mixed in the colour is going to get. And then you end up with something like this. Now there's no variation in the colour at all with this one. If you can see it's just one colour. So that's no good to use for this one because I want the variation. I want this, this part of it as part of this front part here. So basically all I did was look and see which bit I like and what shape I want to put on it um, and things like that and then what I'll do is I'll bake it afterwards then I want to use this finishing wax which we'll do together afterwards just to highlight the tops of these bits then we'll add on I'll do the the flower before it goes in the oven as well and that might cause a bit of a problem actually yeah no I will because I think I'll cover up I don't know, I might not do it, I might not put anything on the top there at all. Um, just the front bit here. Pop it in the oven, I'll bring it back and then we'll use the finishing wax just to have a look and see. Um, and then I might stick some jewels on it, I don't know, we'll see what it looks like and see how I feel. I never plan anything out as such, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Now in order to get the clay to stick, I use Fimo um, liquid clay which is brilliant. I am a stickler if you've got Fimo, um, you're using Fimo clay to get the best results I use Fimo liquid, um, anything that's a product that's going to use and help me doing this obviously not cutters and things like that, that doesn't matter but anything um, like this I try and stick to Fimo, it's going to give you your best results if I was using Sculpey I would stick with a Sculpey liquid clay um, or anything like that because I, I do like that sort of thing I, I do stick try and stick to the same sort of brands but I'm a big Fimo clay lover so everybody's different um, all clays are as good as each other it's just some softer than the other ones so 
but so sort of go from there. Right, so I'm going to just cover this. You don't want it too thick. At the same time, you don't want it too thin. So little, it's easier to put on than it is to take off, and I don't want to waste it. So, okay, so we've just got a little bit on there. I'm just going to rub it around. Now a little bit will go quite a long way. Um, if you get it right to the edges, because that's really what lifts. Okay. See? And then we're just rubbing it on. It doesn't look like much, but it's enough to make the clay stick really well. Like so. There we go. So if you can see that, it's kind of shiny. And if you can there you go. Okay. So let's get a piece of kitchen roll. Okay, put the lid on that. Right, so it's just a case of cutting what bits you like. So with a blade, I use my just my blade. I cut off the bit that I really like. Now it doesn't matter if it's a big piece, small piece, it doesn't matter because it's going to do the same job. So I like that bit there, I really like that bit. So I'm going to cut it along there, just cut it into two, but I will use that bit as well. And then just cut the ends off so it's nice and straight. I mean you can put different shapes on there if you wanted to, but it makes it very hard to when you come in to match, match them up. Oh, that's my Rottweiler, I do apologise. Okay, so see how that fits beautifully on the edge there. I like that, so I'm just going to push it down into place. Now bear in mind, you've just got to remember that it's very, it's movable when it's on here like this. Okay, so just try and remember, you don't want to sort of grab it too hard, otherwise you'll end up damaging the piece. Right, so bear with me. That's right, we've got a puppy in the house, and if I let anything on the floor, she'll eat it. Right, so I like that, so now I'm going to look at it, and you don't need to use this tool, but... You can use anything with a point on it, and I just make sure my edges are nice and straight, like so. And just keep running your fingers along, just to make sure everything's as it should be and as you like it. That's what it boils down to. It's what you like. Um, there we go. So, what do I want to do with this bit? So, let's put this down here. So if we look at the other and the rest of it, you can see different patterns. Um, there's lots of different bits, as you can oh, see there, look. Okay, so I think I'm going to put what looks like little bolts on the corner. Or you could try something different. I'm going to try something different on this one. So I need a square, so I've got my trusted knife, I won't know I use a blade. just want a skinny blade, oh, turn it the right way, otherwise you cut a finger off. Okay, so let's cut that off, put that over there, because I want to keep hold of that, that gold bit in case we need it. Uh, that bit there, because I like the fact it's got a little bit of gold on it. Right, now you want to make this, if you can, as close to a square as feasibly possible. That looks good to me. Now I'm not one for measuring out. Some of you may be. That's up to you. Okay, so now I've got corners. So I think what I'm going to do is pop on a corner. Like so. That's it. And then just kind of push it into place. Although I can instantly see that mm, this is going to be a I problem. don't know that one. Oh, she's sticking her nose in, look. Okay, so we need to make it a little bit smaller. So with my knife, I'm just going to cut it in half again, I think. So they're small. So remember, we only need four of them. Well, I only want four of them. Like so. And then that one, because it's got the piece of gold on it. Now, I can instantly see this one's bigger. So I'm just going to cut it down a little bit. Like so. Right, now we've got for little ones so I'm going to put that back on there look like so and I'm going to push it down now clay on clay is going to stick quite well if you wanted to you could use the liquid clay but I haven't found that I've needed to now 
what I'm really doing here is making it so that when I come along and use the wax afterwards, when it's been cooked, it's going to really sort of show up on the bits that stick out. So this sort of bit, these, the the textures of each each part. Okay. Another one there, look. I'll get that bit off of it. Oh dear. See, it happens to everybody. My next video that I'll be releasing is I've been doing some um, crochet hooks, handles with clay. And I've got some fail whales going on. So I will show you those. Whoops, it's fiddly. I'm not going to lie. It is quite fiddly. But that's part of the fun. Okay. If it joins in the middle there, it doesn't matter. It's just finding different things that you might like to use. Different patterns, different... Oh, I'm one of my... My dogs have rolled on the, the button. You'll have to excuse me in a second and I'll turn that off. It's like my craft table is in the bedroom. Um, yeah. Bear with me, folks. I'm really sorry about this. So, what do I want to do with it now? I'm going to straighten it up. Making sure, folks, that you're still in line. And still far enough down. If it gets to a point where it won't move, because it does suction on quite well, just gently, like, sweep it and it'll, it'll move down. There we go. Okay. Um... So I'd sit and sort of ponder for a moment and sit and look at it and think, right, okay. So I think I'm going to do some little round screw marks, which we're going to put right there. Now I tried not to and haven't used anything in a mould, because I don't really want to. It's not really what this piece is about. It's about inconsistencies, and I like inconsistencies. That's much, much smaller. I do like to try and keep all my, my, my screw holes the same. But other bits, I, I like inconsistencies. It shows it's homemade. And that I've had fun doing so. So, it's worth doing. And I enjoy it. It's very relaxing. I put a film on or a programme, whichever. I just quietly sit and um, relax and do it. It's good. It's good. I've watched The Walking Dead like a billion times now, so we're just waiting for the next episodes to come out. So that works well for me. Right. So, so with the back of my knife, I'm just going to put a line in it. Now they don't all have to face the same way. Oh. And if you're not happy with something, you can move it. You can, like I'm not happy with that one, it was overhanging too far. See, so, like so. There we go, so I'm very happy with that. So now I'm gonna use, and I did find that the end of a pencil or a pen was ideal um, for this. I'm going to use my pen because that really worked well. With the end of a pen, if you just make some holes all the way along, look, it gives you a really nice, neat, clean hole. If you can see that. Right, I'm going to zoom you in just a little bit so you can really sort of see what we're doing. Right, so I'm just going to go along here. Take your time. There's no rush whatsoever. Now I've got inconsistent holes on the other pieces. And, and I have on this one that they're closer together than this side. But that's okay. That doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm very happy so far. It's something different. Different shape. 
Okay, so I think I'm going to leave that one as is now. And then just keep straightening it up, making sure it's nice and straight. Just a little bit of pressure. And then rub that along the bottom and it'll just push it back into place. There we go. So that's that piece done. Right, so what do we want to do now? Now I really like this, this pattern here. But obviously I don't like this jagged edge here. So I'm going to zoom you out just a smidgen. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to come up with a pattern that I, or a shape that I like on this part. So I know I can't have that because it's very uneven. But that doesn't mean we can't use it for something else later. And that one again. Uh, so put them to one side. So this is what we're left with. And I think, as you'll agree, it's beautiful. I mean, you're going to see more of this pattern when it's top coated. It will really bring it out. So I think I'm going to put this one there. Now, don't worry about small gaps because we'll fill them in afterwards. Like so. I like that one. Like that. That's, I'm happy with that. So again, make sure you're nice and straight. You should point your toy. I mean, like I said, it doesn't have to be a pointed tool. It could be absolutely anything. Absolutely anything at all. That's the other nice thing about crafts. You don't have to have all the, the expensive tools and that. I've been doing crafts a long time now, so that's how I've got mine. But I didn't start off like this to start with. Okay, now that's well pushed on. Make sure you've got a nice gap between. Now I don't like them butting up. That is one of my, I don't like that, that, that kind of, I have to sort of sort that out. So we're going to do that in a second. Now all I do is just gently run my pointed tool down there. You can use cocktail sticks, you can use anything you want really. And just keep repeating the action. Don't push too much pressure onto it, otherwise it will end up moving it, which you don't want. So again, make sure that everything's nice and straight like that okay now we can figure out what we're going to do with it so i'll look at the rest of the box and see what i really liked out of it and which ones you can see a little bit of um wood through this piece here and a little bit through there but it won't matter I'm not too worried about it, and a little bit there. You can, if you wanted to, fill it in, which I might do. Once I finish the front, we'll go around and have a look, and see if there's just a very small amount of, of black we could just pop in there, and that would just hide it. Okay, so I think I'm going to do like this one. So a dot in each corner, and then the thin tool. Ooh, it's spinning around like that because you've got the... There, I didn't take them off because I wanted to go round them um, and make sure I, I got really well sort of round them. So, okay. So I'm just going to push that up a little bit more. There. There we go. That's better. And I'm going to come up with a couple of pinholes. Now it is the same as this one. So I might not do that, you know. I might put, yeah, I'm going to put um, them all the way round, just little, like so. Do my cut for corners first. It definitely makes it very hard, or harder, to uh, work when it's spinning around like that. Okay. So this has been in the oven twice now because it's very difficult I don't want to distort one side whilst making the next side so um, oh I've just thrown that piece on there oh no there it is um, I did pop it in the oven to like I say two times and it's going to go in there again um, which does prohibit you from using mica powders so do remember that if you want to use a mica powder on it you've got to do it before it goes in the oven because mica powders will not stick to um, cooked clay 
don't worry about too much about the the shapes because that's not something we need to worry about I've just noticed that there look I must have caught it with my ball with my pointy tool it doesn't matter it gives it a little bit more character and that's what I like is the character of the box so as you'll notice I'm not being very um, straight with the ball wall things that I'm making because I'm, I'm not too worried I want the different variety of shapes and whatnot don't worry about pushing them down too hard on this point because we're going to use a tool to go into the top of it I don't know which one I might try look at the different textures and the different shapes of tools that you've got just notice one that I've got that I'm going to try now so just gently push down on them so they're stuck and I've got this tool okay so I'm gonna use this end and I'm gonna go sh uh, in from the side I think see if it makes a different shape I'm just gonna hit each one They look a bit like Pac-Man. Showing my age a bit. Okay, so that's what we've got. Very happy with that. Okay, now to fill in the gaps, so here and here, we're going to just use like a, a small snake of, of clay and it will fit in there beautifully. Now, I don't want it too big because I like to say I like the gaps between. So we're going to use... That will do it just a little bit of that and then some oh i like that bit just some end bits that you got laying around okay i mean you could if you wanted to use it as a flat part and just cut that and just pop in a, a flat part or just a flat piece perhaps we'll do that at this end in a minute oh actually no we'll use that piece okay let me move that out of the way for a second okay so you just want to roll yourself a snake you don't have to use it all so just break it off because you only need a small one you need to just look and see how big sorry about that how big the hole is and then just put it in accordingly Okay, so that's there. I'm just going to lay it in, squish it in, nip that off on the end, and then push it down. Now, instantly, I can see that's smaller at that end. Oh, for goodness sake, what is going on? One of them must be laying on the other button. Where is it? Right, I'm not happy with that bit because it's thinner at one end than it is at the other end. So I'm going to pull it out. It's got hair on it as well. So there we go. And we're going to just roll that again because I want the consistency right the way down. So that bit looks like it's not too bad. I'll just put those back over there. Now I always cut them too short or I cut them too thin. It's a, a bit of a A bit of a guesswork and I don't like them with the pointy ends either okay I'm getting annoyed now okay I think there's something wrong with my telly my poor puppies and they got the blame my babies okay that fits better there you go so we're just going to smooth it down make sure it's well in there like so and then we're just going to nip the end off and make sure it's nice and straight and then we're going to make a gentle line there and a gentle line there not as easy as it looks but that's okay I'm happy with that okay 
So that's that gap finished and filled in. So I see these bits here. So all we need is a little bit tucked in there. So just pop it on there. Make sure it's nice and well pressed down. And then with your knife, just carefully, without cutting a finger, go along it. Like so. There we go. And then again, like I did before, I just kind of cut it or marked it down there. Like so. And across there. Now this one I'm just going to put... I mean, you can do lines, lots of lines, like so. There we go. Could you repeat that? Oh my goodness, what is going on with all my electricals today? There are a number no. of different events Alexa. happening across us. Alexa, stop. There we go. So it's just about having different textures next to each other like so and then having the gap between the clays and then run your finger along it again just making sure every time that everything is down and pushed on as, as you would like it so that folks is looking pretty good to me so now all we've got to do is this one gap here right so I really liked this one but I don't think we're going to be able to get it in there somehow it's just not the right shape. It's just not the right shape because if I cut off that front, we're going to lose the pattern. Have we? Oh no, I suppose we've still got some on there. Look, some of the gold. So let's see if we can fit it in. That fits perfectly like it was meant to be. Look at that. It doesn't get much cleaner than that. There we go. So I'll stick that in. So that one, I'm going to do a line that way. Now, when you do this, be careful you don't mark any of the others. And a line that way. And a line that way. Now, bear in mind the tops already had and been cooked. So now, with my ball tool, I'm just going to mark and follow the line like so now if you do this on with unconditioned clay what you'll end up doing is cracking that's cracking there because I marked it with the um, with the blade not because it isn't conditioned if you do find you've got a crack and you don't know what to do with it, cover it with a small piece of clay and make out like it's a screw of some sort, So, which is what I'm going to do on here. So I'm just going to put a small piece of clay there, so that covers it straight away. And then we're going to put another piece there. I like that part. But now, obviously, now you can see we've now got to finish off with and try and fill that gap. So. Do be careful with your your shapes because it does cause an issue if you don't sort of think too far ahead. You've got to, to some degree, you've got to keep an eye on it. Okay. So it's just going along, remarking things because as you hold things, they do lose their shape a little bit or they do lose their detail. Just like that. These bits I'm going to mark gold. I've got some gold gilding which I'm going to use. So, Okay, so we've got this bit here. So let's cut it and see what we've got. So I'm just going to shave just a very thin part just to make a nice clean edge. And along there as well. And along there. So what we need, we're looking to do is getting it to fit the hole. It doesn't have to fit it tight because we can come along and we can use something else afterwards to pack it out if you like. Okay. So that kind of fits in there, like so. And we're going to just cut the back off of it without damaging the next piece. 
and then we, all you've got to do is just push it down into place and then you'll get it will sort of go up to the next the next piece that you're wanting to butt it up to now bearing in mind remember again i don't like mine too close i like to have a hole well not a hole but a gap in the clay like so and then make sure it's all straight again now you don't actually have to put anything on there at all if you don't want to you can just leave it or it is entirely up to you I like to put something on there so this one I'm just going to use my my stabby tool and just do some holes all the way along like so following the shape Alexa stop sorry I don't know that Alexa stop there we go all the way along okay I have my front window open now I've got a big fly in here and I don't like flies right so that's what we've got with now so as you can see there's a little gap here so all we're going to do is just use some of this that we rolled out earlier on into a snake and if you do it thin enough you can get a couple of layers in there or if you do it thick enough you can get a one layer I mean it's entirely up to you and this is what I keep I know I keep saying it and I know it's annoying but it's true you literally just do whatever it is you want to do whatever you feel looks right at that moment or see and then we see that it's not long enough of course which is what I said to you anybody who is doing it will be the, exactly the same because there's no plan there's no plan of action of what we're doing so I like to just go with the flow so there's the first piece in there just tuck it up so it's nice and nice and tight so it allows you to get some more in there there we go and then we're going to do it again remembering to take the, um, the slim ends off And then that one goes in there. And again, see, immediately I can see that that's too short. So now I know that's too short, keep that one there. And then as you roll out another piece, you know it's got to be a minimum of... You end up with lots of little bits all over the place. I mean, it's just one of them things. Okay. Now that feels like it was hollow. Yes. Right, so sometimes when you, you do it, it ends up with, if you've got flat clay and you roll it into a snake, um, a ball, whichever, it gets air trapped in it. And what it ends up doing is it rolls, but then it, it feels like it's flat, like squidgy. That's no good. I wouldn't even attempt to use that because it won't sit in there and it might go flat. Right, so there we go. So I'm going to cut my end off. And that end and now we're going to try again all right that's definitely much better and that's our hose been turned on and i'm just going to nip the end off like so and there you have it completely filled in completely done now how amazing does that look there we go so open it up Make sure everything's pushed down enough because you don't want it banging on the top there. So just run your finger along it and down the sides. Make sure everything's as it should be. Now I've got a bit of a, a gap there. Right, we'll keep it like that along the bottom and so forth. And I think that looks pretty good. So, like I said, I'm not going to do the bottom. Because I don't feel like it needs it. But I am going to go and pop this in the oven. And then when we get out the other end. We'll uh, try it with the wax. So I'll be back in a minute. Hi YouTubers. Right so the front now. It has been 
cooked so it's all nice and, and solid now and cooled down um, just a word of uh, caution what I tend to do is cook it in the oven then I just turn it off and leave it to cool down with the oven um, if you bring it out a little bit um, and you start work on it immediately it will be too hot and your products that you're putting on it will not um, work quite as well as they would do as if it was cold Okay, so it's just a, a few for thought there. So we're going to try the finishing wax. Now I made a fundamental area and stirred it. Doesn't look very pleasant, but it was separated. So just a thought. I've got like an old J cloth. It's quite a soft. Um, doesn't let any any any. Um, goodness me, what's the, the word? No bits come off of it. It's not. Even if you rip it, it's not like you leave bits behind, like fibres. That's what I was looking for, fibres. Okay, so we're going to start with the top. And I, all I want to do is just catch um, the pattern. The bits that are stuck up and all that sort of thing, the texture. So I'm going to use my finger for this. Now bear in mind it's a wax. So just very gently wipe it on where you want it. Just all over where you want it and then what we're going to do is buff it off with our non-fibred cloth okay and this is going to be top coated as well so it will be pretty cool when it's done if you can see already it's just looking really good it's up to you how, how far you want to go with it I wanted it a little bit on on the centres as well but when you use the fibre to wipe it off it does wipe quite a lot off um, and it sometimes doesn't look like you've put much on but what we'll do with that is we'll do each side as we go so in a circular motion you're just rubbing it around just gently it says if you want more than one and you want it darker which we're going to have a go at doing in a second which I feel like it has taken it all off but it hasn't it says if you want it darker just reapply so I'm going to do these bits so this time I'm just going to do um, the screws and all that sort of thing the, the just the bits that stand up you can buy craft one which is probably the better bet to do but I thought being um, it was a a, f um, a furniture one it would perhaps be a little bit more um, secure but actually like um, so it would stay on a little bit longer or whichever it is, I don't know I don't know what I was thinking but it's it doesn't okay so we're just going to round circular motions again just gently it's not to turn it a different color as per se it's just to to gold highlight certain bits like so okay so now if we look at the top it does look different from the side they're kind of a little bit more I don't know these they, they've got like a, a shimmer to them rather than just being a flat color so no I'm very pleased with that so we we'll do this part as well now so we we'll do it again so we did two lots on the front so we're going to do two lots on the back here and I did do it in the middles of the other ones but I'm not going to do that with this one just to see if it makes a difference okay so I'm just concentrating sorry I'm not rabbiting but I do probably rabbit a little bit too much anyway so You're probably supposed to put it on with a cloth as well but I find it easier especially with craft stuff it gets it deeper in, and, and I can get it in places that the, my, my cloth doesn't get it not without putting it unevenly okay so we're going to do the same thing again round circular motions we're going to take it off again so it is leaving it on there 
I think that's looking great. The lint-free cloth definitely makes a difference. Because I was using kitchen roll yesterday and my husband said no, no, no. And he was right. Now look at that. Now I think that looks fantastic. So that's those two. If you can see the side there, how plain that looks now. I think that looks great. So just over again, just these bits here. I'm just going to give them a different tone. Because I want them to be a little bit darker than the rest. I mean, if you wanted to gild them afterwards, you could do if you wanted to with some gilded, black gilding. But I'm hoping when I put the gloss, female gloss on the outside, it will really ping it up and really make it stand out. Now I did a uh, tester just to see if it sort of, because it's a wax, I didn't know whether or not the top coat would sort of stay on it. It does, which is another positive thing. And the other thing is, of course, is that this is not overly expensive. Uh, I think the whole massive tub of it was like seven pounds from a local DIY store. So that is worth knowing and remembering because I know the craft ones are very expensive. Right, okay, and there you have it. Fantastic, loving it. Okay, so we're gonna do the same again. triangle because I want to capture the the lines if you can see the lines down the sides like so that's my doorbell according to Wikipedia Alexa, my doorbell stop I do not know I've been sat in the other room earlier on and nothing came on at all it's been a nightmare in here this afternoon so round circular motions going to take it off now like so Oh, it is looking lovely. That end bit, we might have used a little bit too much because the whole thing's... Although it might just be where there's actually gold in the... in the clay. It's just bringing out the colour. If you're not happy, just rub it a little bit harder and I'm pretty sure... Look at that. Loving it. Okay, so I want these darker, these side bits here. So I'm just going to rub it in and I want it darker here. Use sparingly on your finger, otherwise what ends up happening, which I think is probably what's happened this time, is it, um, it rub, when you circular motion it, it rubs it into the rest of it. Okay. So it's just over the little nuts and boltsy bits, like so. And then round circular motions again, and that should... Providing you haven't used too much, take it off, leaving a nice coating. And there we go, and that there looks very much similar to that end. Look at that, I'm absolutely so pleased with it. And when we get some top coat on there as well, it will really, really, really look good. So we're just gonna do the same again with this back bit, and we're gonna do two coats like we did before. Um, Remember, not too much on your fingertips, otherwise it, it just sort of moulds it all together. So, so just where you want it. Okay. Now this one's going to be really good because we've got the, the like little round circles on each one and we've got the lines. In, all going in different directions so this one should be really nice when it, it sort of comes out right we ready oh I just want to do that bit there right let's try that circular motions wow look at that look at that so we're going to do a second coat again and because obviously once you start with a second coat you you have to follow it through otherwise one will be different to the other okay so let's just have a go at this bit so it's just the lines and then and the 
like little round circle bits I'm going to have a little go at this time because I like that idea because it looks really really good oh, I'm so pleased with it ladies and gentlemen leave some comments in the bottom um, leave a comment for me I'd love to a see what uh, you've been up to and B tell me what you think of this okay we're just going to round circular motion it and we're going to see what we're left with oh, don't do that end again there look I'll do that now there we go Oh, I'm so pleased. Looks amazing. So just one last side left to do. And this one's got a really good texture actually here. So that'd be interesting to see what it looks like. And there. Okay. And then that bit there, we're going to come down like so. And this time I haven't used quite as much. I don't think we need quite as much on there. And then we might be able to see a little bit more of the detail. Okay, so here we go. Round circular motion. It's easier to put it down on the side while you're doing it. And then trying to hold it up. Now I think you all agree that looks absolutely fantastic. And you can really see the, the texture now. Look at that. Brilliant. Okay, so last one then, we're going to do just this bit in here. Okay, so drawing it out, because it does go quite a long way. This bit here, we're going to put a very thin amount, I'm going to spread it out over my finger very gently over that bit there, because I really like the texture to that. A little bit on the top here. And we're going for the nuts and bolts again. Like so. Oh, that sounds like my granddaughter. And then that corner and that one. And then that. Rub it around again. And that's the other thing. You don't have to wait for this stuff to go off or dry. It's really good. It's I'm so impressed with it. The first time, I think, in one of my other videos, um, I had a look at it. I think it was when I was looking at the moulds that was the pipes um, and some other bits and bobs and whatnot. I didn't like it very much because I felt like it just made a lot of mess for nothing. But actually, I probably wasn't using it for the right things. Okay, so this is what we're now left with. What, how lush is that? That really is, I'm so pleased with it. Okay, so now we've just got one thing left to do and we are going to, um, let me just dry that off. And now we're going to just top coat it. Probably would need um, two, two coats um, to make sure it was all working and all, all looked good. And my paintbrush has just died a sudden death. Okay, let's put that to one side and get a new one out. I don't know why they do that. There we go. That one looks okay. It was a bit soft, really, for what we want. You want a fairly stiffish brush. That way, then it will it will work for what you want. There, I think that one will be all right. So, just a not a massive brush, but not too small. And let's give it a go. Now, this should look absolutely amazing. Okay. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see this transformation, look at that. Now I didn't do any I did do an experiment just to make sure that it went over the top of the wax, like I said earlier. Um and oh OMG. This is absolutely I am so pleased. This is gonna be really it's I'm so pleased. It's going to be amazing to keep my my very, very, sort of, very well-built um, craft cutters. 
in them. I was going to put a flower on the top, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't want to. I don't want to not be able to see all of this. Look at that. And that will dry clear, so don't panic even if you've got um, a small piece that you can um, puddled in. It will dry clear. Don't panic. Okay, so that's what we've got for the top. Look at that. Now, if that's not amazing, I don't know what is. Okay, let's go for this part. Now, when this is drying, do be careful in case you get it between the... Which is inevitable, you're going to do it. Otherwise, you'll st it will stick shut. So just open it just a little bit once you're finished and waiting for that to dry. Because you don't want to stick it shut. Now, I was going to use some gold gilding afterwards, but I'm not doing that. I don't want to. I just want to keep it, I think exactly how it is i am so pleased with it that furniture finisher is really good they do different colors um it's easier to get hold of and it is much cheaper all you need to do is go to your local diy store in the uk this is um right so i'm just gonna pull that up oh. i'm gonna put some in there just a piece of kitchen roll or something just to make sure it stays open it only needs to be thin so just sort of fill it up there and just like that make sure the paper doesn't stick to your top coat otherwise there we go like so so we're going to do the same thing again on the sides and then we're just i'm oh look at that it is showing up the details so well it's i'm absolutely shocked it's amazing now the only trouble you're going to have now is that you've got to try and paint, like, top coat it. Goodness me, children coming out of school. Um, try and top coat it in a way that you'll have to let one piece dry before you can do the other parts. So I'm just going to do this end and then I'm just going to let it dry. Otherwise, I don't want to leave fingerprints in it, which would ruin it. So, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will say thank you for watching. Please do have a go. I will finish this off uh, later on. It doesn't take long to dry. I'm going to move it back so you can see it, and I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Look at the detail. I'm sure you will agree it is absolutely stunning. And it's perfect for keeping my my cutters in like I say I am so 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 pleased but you you definitely do want to let it dry on its own look because now I've caught that edge so that's one that would just peel back look because it's it's pretty good stuff um oh let's get my tweezers on it just so I can pull that bit off because I don't that's it but I can touch that up in a bit so so there you go ladies and gentlemen to hit that subscribe button hit that like button and leave me a comment if you wish and please hit the bell and then you won't ever miss another video again that I make and um, thanks for watching I'm really pleased I hope you have good similar um, experiences with the same stuff bye bye for now